I'm bored, Aunt Fippy. Z slouched further down on the couch. What are we going to do today? Why not go see the animals? Said Fippy with a smile. We'll go to the zoo. Yeah! Z let out a whoop and ran to find some shoes. <laughs> we present to you... Fippy Goes to the Zoo, a Kubernetes story. The first animals they came upon were the size of squirrels. Furry and blue, each little animal carried a tiny box as they unceasingly zipped back and forth. Those, said Fippy, are pods. All day and all night, they run back and forth carrying their little containers. Is that all they do, Aunt Fippy? Yup, see, for in their entire lives, that's all the pods do. They run. <laughs> pods. In Kubernetes, pods are responsible for running your containers. Every pod holds at least one container and controls the execution of that container. When the containers exit, the pod dies too. Pods are the basic unit for running containers inside of Kubernetes, and a pod provides a way to set environment variables, mount storage, and feed other information into a container. As Fippy and Z walked on, they saw a large glass enclosure. Pressed against the window was a line of happy little meerkat faces. Those are the replica sets, said Fippy. As Z watched, the face on the right grinned widely and tipped itself off the ledge. In unison, the others hopped over to fill the space, and then an identical meerkat scurried up on the left side. <laughs> Every time one little replica falls, another one hops right up, explained Fippy. Replica sets. A replica set ensures that a set of identically configured pods are running at the desired replica count. In a, if a pod drops off, the replica set brings a new one online as a replacement. Replica sets are considered a low-level type in Kubernetes, and often Kubernetes users opt for higher-level abstractions like deployments and daemon sets. Walking further, Z pointed out a clump of bur burrows and warrens. While there were plenty of signs that the area was inhabited, neither Fippy nor Z could see a single movement. The secrets are in there, said Fippy. But you can't see them without these decoder glasses. Z took a pair of glasses that Fippy offered, slid them on, and blushed. Oh my, I think I'm ready to go now, Aunt Zip Fippy. <laughs> Z handed back the glasses, and onward they went. Secrets. Secrets are used to store non-public information, such as tokens, certificates, or passwords. Secrets can be attached to pods at runtime so that sensitive configuration data can be stored securely in the cluster. Secrets are base 64 encoded at rest, but the data is automatically decoded when attached to a pod. Secrets can be attached as files or environment variables. Use add-on encryption providers for blocking your data. A group of iguanas gathered near a large slingshot along the shore of a pond. An island stood in the center of the water. An iguana threw herself into the slingshot, and the other iguanas launched the little beast toward the island. The deployments release a group onto the island. Right now, they're trying to get three out there, said Fippy. At that moment, another iguana rocketed into the air, but missed the island with a colossal splash in the pond. Fippy said, if they miss, they just keep trying until they get as many as they need. Deployments. A deployment is a higher order abstraction that controls deploying and maintaining a set of pods. Behind the scenes, it uses a replica set to keep the pods running, but it offers sophisticated logic for deploying, updating, and scaling a set of pods within a cluster. Deployments support rolling updates and rollbacks, and rollouts can even be paused. Several stone pillars arose from a grassy knoll, and at the top of each sat a vulture. As Z and Fippy watched, one vulture spread its wings and flapped off into the distance. No sooner had one left than another took its place. Z asked, 
What are they doing? Those are demon sets, said Fippy. They make sure to occupy every pillar, rain or shine, day or night. I bet that if we added a new pillar, a new bird would land on it faster than you could say cube cuddle, chuckled Fippy. Damon sets. Damon sets provide a way to ensure that a copy of a pod is running on every node in the cluster. As the cluster grows and shrinks, the daemon set spreads these specifically labeled pods across all of the nodes. Daemon sets have many uses. One frequent pattern is to use a daemon set to install or configure software on each host node. As they walked on, they saw an aquarium with an enormous reef. Edge to edge, it appeared that the rock would keep anything from passing from one side to the other. Z watched as hundreds of tiny fish made a dash for the center of the face of the rock. At full speed, the fish swam into a hole bored into the rock face and momentarily vanished from sight. Z let out a gasp. Multicolored flashes erupted from the opposite side of the coral. Instead of coming out of a single hole, the fish seemed to materialize from tiny fissures all over the far side of the rock. Ingresses are beautiful, said a dreamy-eyed Fippy. <laughs> Enchanted, Z muttered, uh-huh. Ingresses. Ingresses provide a way to declare that traffic ought to be channeled from the outside of the cluster into destination points within the cluster. One single external ingress point can accept traffic destined to many different internal services. Ingresses route traffic to and from the cluster, they provide a single SSL endpoint for multiple applications, and many different implementations of an ingress allow you to customize for your platform. Z pointed to the raccoons sprawled motionless in the next enclosure. What's wrong with them? Suddenly, one sprung to its feet, did jumping jacks, and then settled back down for another nap. Those are crown jobs, said Fippy. <laughs> Mostly, they just sleep, but periodically, they spring into action to do a specific job. As she spoke, another bolted upright, grabbed a broom, swept the entire enclosure, and then dropped off to sleep again. Aunt Fippy, can I bring that one home to clean my room? Fippy laughed as they walked on. Cron jobs. Cron jobs provide a method for scheduling the execution of pods. They're excellent for running periodic tasks like backups, reports, and automated tests. They use common cron syntax to schedule tasks, and they're also part of the batch API for creating short-lived non-server tools. Z halted abruptly. In the distance, a black railed fence arose. The arches above the pen were marked C, R, D. Between the bars, Z could make out some peculiar critters, a giraffe with a hippopotamus head, a snake with raccoon ears, a lion with a beaver tail, and a unicorn with no horn. Z wasn't sure she liked the looks of that place. Ooh. Said Fippy, a look of concern on her face. Uh, look, it's lunchtime. We better head home. With a look of mild relief, Z complied. Can we stop at Captain Kuby's shake shop on the way out? CRDs, or custom, def custom resource definitions, provide an extension mechanism that cluster operators and developers can use to create their own resource types. A CRD defines a new resource type and tells Kubernetes about it. Once a new resource type is added, new instances of that resource may be created. Handling CRD changes is up to you. A common pattern is to create a custom controller and watch that watches for new CRD instances and responds accordingly. Z N. So we hope you enjoyed our book. Uh, we thought you also might enjoy a little look behind the scenes to see the creative process that went into making something like this. Karen? Yeah, so 
It all started when Matt drafted the first version of the book, and it was actually originally called Fippy Goes on Safari. So once we had something to work with, I flew out to Boulder and we spent an afternoon working on basically what was just stick figure storyboards. So with the storyboards, we sent it off to our artist Bailey to get illustrated. And if any of you are familiar with the first children's book, she's the same artist that did that one as well. Once I had the final illustrations, I took that, did some editing, put the text on top, <laughs> text on top and laid it all into a book and sent it off to CNCF for publication. So what you're gonna see in the next couple of slides is our original whiteboard stick figure drawings on one side, and then Bailey's work as she progressed from illustration to the finished product. And just be on the lookout for some subtle and not so subtle changes. So here you can see my sketch on the left and Bailey's on the right. And with color, it looked like this, but we still felt like we could jazz things up a little bit, and so Bailey added... Three more stripes. <laughs> and so here, once again, we can see that Bailey is a way better artist. Yeah, I mean, uh, not only did she uh, have the kind of creativity to fill in backgrounds like this, but she caught a mistake that we didn't realize we had made. You see, in the text, we had said that the meerkat was falling off one side when in the illustration we had shown it falling off the other. Bailey caught that and flipped that around for us before we had ever even noticed. <laughs> this one was one of those odd ones to write. Most of the time when you write something, you have kind of a mental image going, but with this one, I really didn't know what the enclosure was gonna look like until we started whiteboarding something out on the board. And so we ended up spending a surprising amount of time doing research on what rabbits live in, rabbit warrens, burrows, and also 3D glasses. <laughs> and so here, this is our sketch with creatures that look like they're from the Black Lagoon, and they're really meant to be iguanas, and luckily, yeah. Bailey understood what we meant. Who knows how to draw an iguana? I mean, I don't know, <laughs> And so it felt a little empty in the pool, and so inspired by our colleague Michelle Norali and her love for donuts, <laughs> I asked Bailey to add in a donut pool toy with rainbow sprinkles, of course. <laughs> this one was kind of the most, I guess, intellectually challenging page. How do you represent an ingress with the zoo animals? Uh, I, I actually got pretty excited by the end because I like that way that you know the fish swim in and then they sort of vanish for a moment and then they kind of materialize all over the place on the other side, each directed to its correct destination. And that to me sort of captures this kind of magical view a lot of us have of how routing works. Some of the challenges though are maybe not so intellectual. Uh, our biggest difficulty when we colorize this one was figuring out what colors to make the fish. We decided on this pretty neon set. When I first wrote this, uh, we didn't have a name for the animals. I just put a fuzzy little creature or something in the original text. And so while we were whiteboarding it this out, we were trying to decide what kind of animal and they started to look a little bit like raccoons. And then we started looking up trash panda and before long, we were giggling in front of the computer looking at, you know, danger noodle. Which is actually a snake. <laughs> But you might notice here that uh, between Bailey's first illustration and the first colorized version, there's a, there's a new little broom appearing by the tree. And that's because we wanted to kind of play up that joke uh, about, about, about Z you know, wanting the, the one to come home with her and clean her room. And for those of you who paid attention earlier on, um, on the spread that says Z later, you can actually see Z holding a little raccoon with a room. So it's fun to make a lighthearted joke but I was a little nervous about this one. I mean, I didn't want anybody to be offended and we almost took this one out. But then when Bailey delivered the drawings, it was just super cute and, and I loved the way that it kind of makes you laugh and so we decided in the end to leave the CRD slide in. And so uh, sometimes it's quite hard to come up with colors for imaginary colors. So this was the first iteration. Yep, gray head. Pink head, blue head. <laughs> you can go ahead. 
So in Fippy's first adventure, Fippy met Captain Kubi and Goldie, and together they learned about Kubernetes as they sailed the high seas. And so today, we'd like to announce that Fippy and friends are going on a new adventure. We'd like to invite Janet and Liz, the KubeCon and CloudNativeCon coaches, onto the stage with us. It's been a real pleasure to watch Fippy and her friends uh, as they've kind of helped people get a footing in the cloud native architecture and infrastructure. And today, we're very happy to announce that Microsoft is donating Fippy and her friends and both of the books to the CNCF. <laughs> 